Um, and and I won't. I'll just. I'll just start by saying something from this. I'll say. You can feel my rush, chilling your teeth, lick your lips. You can't escape the June 27 issue of Down in the Dirt magazine, which is called Embracing Shadows, which was out in the beginning of June. It's one of the magazines that I publish. And I also release CC&D magazine, which I'm really excited because it happens to be the 24 year anniversary issue. And I had to go to the graffiti wall and I was thrilled to get this one because it's a perfect title, Respect Our Existence or Expect Our Resistance. And that's the cover for this issue. If anybody wants to know anything about submitting poetry or prose or whatnot to me, just find me and let me know it's this stuff and you can be in this nifty little monthly ISBN book blah 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 but um <laughs> sorry I'm not good at selling stuff um I, the shirt that I'm wearing is a shirt that was my dad's <laughs> yay dad and, and I think it's so incredibly funny that he was wearing this shirt when he was sitting with me and my mom when I went to my junior prom, so I'm in my prom dress and he's got his martini in one hand and this shirt on. And <laughs> I'm like, that's perfect, I got a photo from that. But he didn't have his class ring, which I was able to pull off and get for him and I'm like, oh, so I got his class ring, which is a really cool class ring. Never I'll stop talking about that stuff. But I figured I'd do one. I actually wrote something for Dad once, and I don't write poems for Dad because it's not like he's gonna like that kind of stuff. <laughs> but I wrote this for him for a Father's Day uh, a number of years ago, and it's called Learning More. It's amazing how I learn more, how I take it all in, how I think that I'm just learning little random pieces of information, and that is when I find out that all the pieces relate, and that there is meaning to almost everything I see or do. I remember so much about you, and I know there is so much you have taught me. You were stern for a reason, and this is how you kept everything in line without usually raising your voice to me, without ever actually wanting to say a word to me, because I just knew. You were making all the details possible by working so hard. Mom knew this, and all the children thank you, and I thank you, and Mom and you were what made us, us. Life would never be the same without your influence, without you making it all possible. My brother told me that we were all creative in the family. I did not see how, not for all of us. I did not fit those pieces together. But he laid out the details this way for me. Mom painted. One son was an architect. The other used construction to build from scratch. One sister was an art teacher. Another got her out out through crafts. And I was a graphic artist and a photographer and a writer. But then I remembered one more thing. Once I was looking in the little kitchen and found a box of old black and white photographs and I didn't know where they came from. I asked you, Dad, and you said that you used to be a photographer, that you developed these pictures and that you took pictures when you were in high school. And that was your way that you could be creative. I mean, he played the trombone, and he also took and developed his photographs, and this gave me my own snapshot of you. It helped me realize that these are the things we do to keep us alive. It gave me one new memory of you. Something I learned about you came to me through chance, firsthand. This was how I learned more about you and me, and I thank you for that. And I'm learning about you, these tiny glimpses. It is as if as I took these snapshots of your life. Now I can slowly piece all this together to make all the pictures complete. Now I know that my life, life is not easy and that it takes work. Your life has been difficult at times and your life has been rich as well. Your life has also made me rich, rich from you. When people compliment me, tell me that I'm smart and talented, I know where the pieces came from that have made me whole, that has given this to me. And I thank you for that. Thank you. Please. This is a poem that was in my feature for the 2009 Poetry Game Show 
where I had a bunch of poets in Chicago back when I, um, before I started running an open mic in Chicago, I did a show and a bunch of people came up and read poems of mine and there was a winner. We had an applause meter so the person with the loudest applause actually won and it was Wayne Ellen Jones and he read this poem, I don't know if I'll get a blast for it, but it's called Oriental. Years ago, Chinese women bound their feet with claws, forcing them to retain the foot of a child. The smaller the foot, the higher the class, the more helpless the woman, the more she needed a husband to take care of her. It was normal for the daughter to cry and cry at the thought of hurting her feet so, of being unable to walk, of crippling herself. But the mother knew better. The girl would never find a suitable husband if her feet were like those of a servant. Well, at least a working servant. Handcuffs are like swatches of cheesecloth slowly wrapping layer upon layer upon layer. The tears falling land in her lap into a pattern as the daughter sobs and rocks back and forth. Thank you. Thank you. And when Wayne Allen Jones did that, he got the the, uh, the poet winner crown, which is a Burger King crown that has little flags on it that said poetry contest winner on it. And he kept that thing for years. But I'm going to finish off with this poem, and thank you very much. This is called Elusive Imaginary Creature. So I've got this friend who's had this problem, and they don't know if they should see a doctor. So my friend thinks her husband is cheating on her. Oh, what should she do? So I've got this friend who wants to kill their boss, but they don't want to get fired, and they don't know what to do. We've all heard these stories before, and we've all probably used that line before, too, saying, I've got this friend, when we're really talking about ourselves. <laughs> this elusive, imaginary creature is from a line we've all used, because we're all too afraid to say, we've got a problem. We're too afraid to share. A and think about it. What if this elusive imaginary creature was real and had all these problems we ascribe just to get advice? <laughs> Horrific job. Cheating spouse. Mounting debt. Backstabbing friend. A lump under the skin. <laughs> They'd be a basket case. <laughs> So why do we do it? Why do we share problems in the third person to get some assistance instead of asking for a hand? I know we all think we're all tough as nails. We've got it all under control. So maybe it's because we create this persona and we don't want to shatter this image we've created to the rest of the world. We've created this card house, this delicate card house, so we don't want to see it fall down. So we say, I've got this friend. <laughs> we create this elusive, imaginary creature because look at our lives. <laughs> look at what we've made. We surely don't want to shatter this image we've created for us and for the rest of the world. Thank you.